Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. It's always an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. I'm excited for this show today. We have a lot to cover and a lot to talk about. Just before I came on, I was in a meeting today with um, one of our previous guests that we had on the show, and her and I were talking about, she was just featured on the World Parliament stage and she was featured at, as a keynote speaker there. And they were, you know, she was featured under, under the spirituality category. And so I was, you know, asking her how, how that situation went and how was her feedback and, and how was the show? How was the experience? And it was a five day event. And we were talking about when she was on here she, she talked about so many things that, that really hit home. And we were talking about addiction when she was on our show here. And I, I remembered just now speaking with her when the whole, when I faced my own inner addict, where I was, you know, addicted to all kinds of things all my life, you know, going from drugs to uh, alcohol, to food, to drama, you know, and um, I discovered that when I was doing my own inner work, my own inner journey, that when I got to the root core of what addiction really is, I discovered that there was self-hate. I discovered at the root of the addict was self-hate. And that addict all my life long was running around always trying to numb up that root, numb up those feelings with something to be, to be filling that void. And I remember that I replaced that self-hate with radical, radical self-love, which is not easy to do. Because when you're in the face of hate and not love, when you're in that face, when you're in that space, when you're in that route where you're facing yourself and where you want something or someone to come in and make it better, mm -hmm. right? And in the end, it was the love that I was willing to put into that space, the love that we are, the love that love is, Love is unconditional. Love is loving. Love is God. Love is the universe. Love is kindness. Love is softness. And it was with that application, me bringing love to that space is when I healed my own inner addict. And so I just want to say for all of you out there that are practicing self-love that are dedicated and committed to really loving the self, that has been the homecoming. That has been the journey for so many of us on the path of bringing our truth to, you know, bringing the truth home. So I just want you to know that it's possible and keep working on bringing the love to where you are, bringing, bringing the compassion, that radical self-love, because in the end, what it comes down to, nothing else will do. Nothing else will fill that space. So that was just before I came on to the show today. And I want to also let you guys know that at one o'clock today, we have Diane Solano. And Diane is going to be bringing on a guest to a person that healed himself. I was actually chatting with him on Instagram this morning and he was talking about, you know, he healed his own cancer. So that's at one o'clock on Transformation Talk Radio. Make sure you stay for that show. And then at the 1.30, we have Christelle Biga and she's going to be bringing on 
again, talking about the power of intuition. So two power hours today with amazing people that are coming through, you know, the Cornelia Stephanie and Transformation Talk Radio Facebook. So thank you so much for listening and for tuning in. Stories of hope today. In these times of uncertainty, when, when, when nothing is as we thought it would be, how can we find peace and be the peace, be the love that we want to see in the world? That's why I created the Stories of Hope so that you can hear other people that have, you know, overcome insurmountable odds and that have, that have created new pathways, new ways of living and being. And that when we share those stories, that you can find hope, that maybe it will give you an idea and inspiration. Maybe you will hear something that's going to inspire you and um, help you on your path today. So my first guest, I can't wait for you to meet her. I'm excited to meet her because wait till I tell you about her, uh, her bio. Her name is Sam Rizagi, and she is, she's an engineer. She's an engineer and has worked in the energy sector for more than 15 years, focusing on innovation, design, and project management as, as daily competencies. This motivated her to start designing, I love this, a bag for professional women who want to look stylish throughout all facets of their day while commuting in the office and after hours. Pensata was born by an engineer trying to think about every design possibility that a woman's bag could need. Sam's life journey from being a woman in the energy sector, immigrated to a new country by herself and work in, work in a different culture, taught her how to be resilient and always look at the bigger picture of life. For that reason, her vision is to build a community for resilient women who do it all. Welcome to the show, Sam Ragazzi. Thank you so much, Carolina. It's uh, thanks for having me and thanks for the intro. Yes, it's wonderful what your mission is for what your vision is and for what you're doing. I hope that you're going to have a bag to show us. Um, oh, yeah, I, I guess I have. <laughs> it's just a little bit further there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, take us take us on your journey. You know, you sure. came here today to tell us the story and I yeah. I want to hear, you know, what where you came from and what your story is that we can be inspired by what you're going to share with us. Sure. Um, so I raised and uh, I born and raised in Iran, and um, I became mining engineer, and then I got a master and PhD in petroleum engineering back in home and moved to Canada in 2009. Before that, I, I have I work in the UK, I work in Venezuela for a while, and uh, I have been in energy sector for more than 15 years, and I'm still working in the corporate companies. Um, yeah, moving moving by myself to a new country, um, I couldn't find it as a challenge, but it was something that I really wanted. So I basically. I wanted to kind of like try to work in another country and live in another country and um, see how how is the world look like basically. So um, I believe every single time in my life, it's like kind of like the checkbox and I find another things to kind of start working on it and just keep going and uh, finding new things. And I always have a big, um, goal in my life and I was just I'm just like keep going toward that um, I get a setback for sure <laughs> during during my way to get to where I want to be but uh, I believe that bigger picture um, family and love that I get from from like people around me it helped me to just like move forward um, as as you mentioned it has been for like I think four or five years that I was uh, watching uh, women like myself going to work and carrying a couple of bags. And I just keep thinking about it. I hate carrying a couple of things and I hate to carry things are so heavy. So I was just like, is there any way that I can make this happen? Maybe like engineer something that still looks good, but, uh, but it doesn't look like a gym bag, let's say. It's, it's kind of like different. 
So it took me like 15 months and I did some survey and uh, from, from women, like, what do you carry in your bags? Like, what is the most important one? And one of the message I had was less is more. You don't have to carry like a bunch of stuff. And if it has the compartment, you will see what are you carrying and you won't carry more than what you need. Um, so as you get older, older like me, so you don't want like carry many stuff, your back is start hurting or like shoulders start hurting and you want to kind of be careful with that. So um, basically I came up with that and, um, and I launched it during COVID, which was very interesting. And I, I knew that it must be some setback there, but I was like, I was so, I mean, basically the way I started thinking about that, I was just like, okay, this is the year that I have to learn and I have to launch and kind of like go forward and just doing it and keep understanding what uh, my customer needs. But women are women everywhere. They, they are, they, they need like something like that. And, and I was fortunate that I had customers around the world, which was, I, and I communicate, I communicate with them myself and, they basically, they know me as a Sam that who did this. And basically she's a founder and they know that if drop me an email or send me a message anywhere. So I would be the person that who kind of like reply to them directly, at least until we grow to, to where that I might have some kind of help from other people. But I try to kind of like, uh, because I want to know my customers and I want to know my, my, uh, uh, their need basically. So that's all about me. And uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, so you and I have this in common with, you know, coming from a different culture. I came to this country when I was 13. And so I was, I was a young girl. And so I know what, what, um, you know, coming at the time, think about it at the time coming to a new country when you're 13, that's very challenging because you're in your you know, growing up into a young woman at that time was very challenging. Right. So, but I, I know what, you know, what that is like exactly. coming to, you know, an, a new country. And I know it's, it's definitely an adjustment. And then for you to come by yourself, I can only imagine what, what that was like for you. So uh, you came, you came here from Iran and then now, did you, did you then become, you know, are you on a green card? Is, uh, how, how, how did all that happen? Are you, um, who sponsored, you know, like, did you get a visa? Yeah, I was fortunate enough that uh, I was in Canada presenting in a conference and okay. one of the companies, they basically interviewed me and offered me a job. So they got me a work permit visa and I became permanent resident here and now I'm citizen. So it has been 12 years already. In Canada. In Canada, yeah. yeah that was probably really easy to... It, exactly. I was, I was one of the lucky one, basically. I, I had a job when I moved here. But uh, so one of, one of the, my give back to the community that I'm coming from, and I haven't come as a refugee, but I, I, I think I can relate to them uh, a little bit, not much, because they are they are going through lots of like ups and down before they move to a new country. But we just uh, launched our first giving back to the community of refuge women, and right now we are giving like ten percent of our kind of sales to refuge women that they basically they're trying to build their career here and build their business here in Canada. And I just like started collaborating with a nonprofit company a nonprofit organization is called Jumpstart, uh, refuge ta uh, refugee talent that they are helping men and women, but they have a program just for building, uh, building hair startup. That's their program. And this is gonna go back to their program. And um, I'm, I'm very passionate about that. It just like, it's, I understand like, how hard it is to um, kind of settle down in a new culture, especially if you go through all of those trauma and all of those uh, uh, difficulty to get here. Yeah, yeah. I, I just love what you're saying about the startup and about the nonprofit and what you're doing to help uh, you know, women now in this way. This is one of the ways that you're giving back. You're being a wonderful positive example of what, what women can do 
and that not to let anything stop us from moving into our abundance, not the culture and conditioning what we were born into. Because yep. when somebody was asking me the other day, this on Facebook, I saw this was great. Uh, asked me, you know, who are you? What's your name? What, um, what do you do for a living? What's your background? What's your culture? And I remember when I was a a answering the questions, one of the ways I answered is that I am now a galactic citizen, meaning that I'm a global citizen. I am, even though I live here in America and I, I became an American citizen in 2007, and even though I, I am, I also find that my heart approaches the world from a state of oneness right. and from, from that. And that makes me um, a galactic uh, citizen, you know? And it was neat to be able to come to this place to know that and, and, yeah. and answer the questions like that. And that's why when I see you, I see you as a positive role model for women that I'm sure from your culture, from Iran, where women are, um, you know, conditioned is, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, um, to not stand in their power. So, um, so we have actually in Iran, like we have lots of educated women there. So I, okay. I, can, I can say, I think the last time I saw, it was like more than 50% of oh. the university attendees are female, basically. Oh. Um, we have lots of educated women back in Iran, but there might be some other stuff that they restricting, restricted them kind of like um, um, being in the power. But when we, and, and I have seen many people like, like myself here in Canada, that they, they came in, they start working, they are uh, generating money and uh, kind of like they are in the good positions. The other way that I, I would also look at it, like, in general, uh, in, the, in the corporate companies, there are less number of women, especially in engineering, less number of people in the power or in the, um, in the management kind of um, positions, which, which made uh, kind of like my position difficult. When I came here, I was just like in a different culture. And also I'm in the uh, basically um, male, uh, kind of environment that I have to kind of like we go to the meetings and um, I think now it's a lot better but before I used to be kind of only one female in the meetings or and then I was always thinking oh my god uh, English is not my first language and I always like kind of like bringing myself down I'm not kind of a speak up and I have still have that problem I guess um, uh, in, in, in the in the in the corporate basically yeah and, and, and all of those are challenges. And you were talking about love and don't hate yourself and, you know, love yourself. And, and, and that's difficult. You have to practice that and you keep do. yourself like positive and, and let uh, like, because some, some part of that is out of my control. Like it's the environment. So you cannot change them like overnight. So you have to always be like kind of like the positive in that kind of like situations. Uh, yeah, um, the, yeah, the whole thing, because you're, you're saying a lot of things we're talking about, we're talking about self love, we're talking about the male culture of, um, you know, the male dominant world, where we women had to, you know, present themselves in equality, and where they weren't valued in in the way that they deserve, right, they had those challenges. And even receiving equal pay and or you know even extend that i mean to you know make a better living women still have to deal with that there's still mm -hmm. a lot of that going on i see a lot of that in the african american community where you know i'm i i'm i help uh in that in that way as well so i see that there and i really want to help people to um all people Mm -hmm. to really, you know, step into their right livelihood, into their right mm -hmm. abundance, because um, it's, we, we're talking about fairness and equality, and that time is now for all of us, for mm -hmm. all of us, and it's, it's a win-win for us all, and so, you know, I always love when women are inspired to become entrepreneurs, such as yourself, and um, what you're doing, and it's an incredible story how you became a Canadian citizen, I'm glad that you came here today to share with us. So what I'd like to do now is 
it, it appears that our next guest um, had some internet um, problems and is not here. So you're lucky um, <laughs> because you're getting extra airtime, which is fantastic. So why don't we do this? Let's take a break. And then when we come back, I want to show your bag. I want to um, tell the people where they can find out a little bit more about you and maybe even your nonprofit organization that people can look that up. And um, we can go from there. So let's take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show with Sam Regrazzi and we'll be right back. We are back. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie show. I'm really enjoying Sam's con conversation that we're having. And we're extending uh, this interview today simply because Karen Armstrong was gonna be with us and they're completely out of internet. They have no internet where they're at due to high winds. And it's amazing what happens, you know, we have to be able to go with the flow, no matter what, the show must go on. Exactly. And so that's, that's so great. We're just going to extend our time with Sam and we have plenty to talk about, but I know if you're anything like me, you wanna see the bag. <laughs> I want to see the bag. So let us see that beautiful bag that you designed and created. So basically, this bag is look like a normal bag. So when you say, it, but the, there is the feature on it, which has the secret pocket here. Basically, you open it and you can basically put your shoes on. And you, if you're on the go and you want to kind of like, especially if you're leaving Canada and you cannot really wear these in winter time outside so you want to always have a spare shoes basically and i have seen i'll, I'll open just bring it up to show you a little bit better yeah. so this is just like the soft bag inside and i have people that they are using it as a launch box for that so instead of shoes so there's like two different ways that you can basically use this and then inside this bag you will have a place for your laptop so you can basically have a place that you can put your laptop. I cannot show you properly. But then if you also don't use your shoes part, so it's basically become a normal bag, like inside. So there's a couple of pockets here for your phone, for your uh, pen. There are two pockets on the side. We won't say it, but there is for your bottle of water, your glasses. So there's lots of compartment in it. At the end, also, there is a detachable like key leash that you can basically just detach your key and just like move around. Or you don't, if you know that how we lose our kind of like keys inside our busy bags. And on the back, also, there is a, there's another kind of like pocket here. So, so you can basically, it fits easily an iPad your tablet, it can easily okay. fit there. So with all of those things, it also comes with a crossbody, a small, a small crossbody uh, wallet that is grab and go. It has like the two, uh, just like one kind of like small for your credit card, just like handy over there. They're all RFID, so it's basically it's safe if you wanna put your, inside is like kind of like the, just a couple of, um, uh, card holders and and you can fit easily your passport in it and if you want to just you go to the work and you want to just go grab and grab but grab a coffee or lunch so you don't have to take your big bag with you so that's the whole concept behind it that when you go out you can go from the morning up to the night if you want to go and grab a beer with your friends after covid i guess <laughs> so you can do that so and, and i have traveled with a lot so it's really handy if you're going to go for a day trip or like the just business trip so you don't have to like carry like so many stuff and just this one and your carry on it's, it's good enough so whole concept behind that is just like be light don't carry too much and just see where is your stuff and just like have an easy access to them yeah, and so this was your design and your creation. I love it because, and now that the inside of it, does it have, it's one compartment on the inside, right? Is it so one compartment? That compartment that I was showing that you can put shoes in it, it's yeah. a soft compartment. Uh -huh. So if you don't use it, basically it can strap back and it's become a normal bag. Uh, from the inside if if you go to my website uh basically there is a video that it, it easily shows like how you put the stuff in 
and there is a top kind of like pictures that it shows exactly what is inside. Uh, but yeah, so it's basically your shoes is gonna go underneath of everything else. Okay, yeah. yeah. But if uh, you don't use it, it's just like the, like the soft bag. You just yeah. want it to be like wipeable and kind of like waterproof so you don't put your shoes next to other stuff. Yeah, I love that. I love uh, that you can put shoes or you can put lunchbox or you can put iPad. You can put different things in there. So exactly. whatever, your laptop, yes. like 13 inch laptop is easily going in, uh, in its own compartment. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And I like the detachable uh, thing. So definitely let us know where the website is. The website is called pensata.com, P-E-N-S-A-T-T-A.com. And pensata is an Italian name it's the meaning behind that is like the such a great idea and it has an out at the end which is like kind of related to a female basically that's the whole kind of idea everything is around women basically in this um uh, in this concept and in pensata.com right now we have 30 percent off just for the black uh, like black friday and holiday time and we are giving back 10 percent of sales not profit the 10 percent of sales we are giving back to uh jumpstart refugee talent to basically help another woman build her career oh that's fantastic that's really that's really the new model it really is a way to support women entrepreneurs giving back to something that you're passionate about and helping somebody else i love that yeah yeah it's it's um i i really like my big kind of dream is basically to make it here in canada and train and uh, give um job basically, or create jobs for, for women, women in need uh, in, uh, in general, basically. Because uh, um, I always say, not everybody is engineer or doctors or like things. There are lots of people, they work with their hand and they are amazing. Like in the culture I come back, lots of people, they have like the swing background. And if we can make it happen here, that would be great. It's the dreams comes true for me. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I'm so glad that you shared that because I want to see your dream come true. It's a wonderful, it's wonderful that you even have the dream and that you're willing to speak the dream, live the dream, announce mm -hmm. the dream. And so I want to, I want to see that come true for you. And that's, I always like asking people what their vision is, what their mm -hmm. dreams are. And I'm glad that, I'm glad that you shared that with us. Give us the website one more time for, so that we can share that again. It's called pensata.com, P-E-N-S-A-T-T-A.com. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. It's called Pensata Bag. Um, on Instagram is Pensata. Um, so it's, um, yeah, you can follow us on LinkedIn. We have, we are almost in Pinterest, uh, LinkedIn everywhere. And uh, just the, uh, and and this but uh, this one is just the first design and i'm working on the on the next and next and next so basically yeah mm, that's that's uh, and, and we we basically ship worldwide especially for the us people there's a free shipping to north america yeah i love that i you know i definitely want to go i definitely want one i definitely want to go look at it i'm glad that you came on and i mean you know we're we're you know, we're working with so many women all the time and mm -hmm. talking about the things that we love that are mm -hmm. locally created also and exactly. um which which is really important right now is yeah. you know um so, you know purchasing local and supporting the entrepreneurs and artists that are here in our in our local communities. So uh, Sam, it's wonderful to meet you. The same. Thank you for taking your time and coming on and for sharing. And let's everybody, let's get this video out. Let's get this podcast out. Let's share it with all of our social media so that more, more women can be inspired, more people can be inspired because you see Sam has a big dream, a big vision, and we wanna help her make that a reality. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed that. 
Thank you so much. Okay, my dears, it's wonderful to, uh, you know, facilitate the Cornelia Stephanie show. We're going to get ready for our next guest and we're going to say, uh, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Back everyone, you're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie show. It's always so wonderful to have these amazing speakers here that are sharing their incredible stories with us so that we can find hope in the midst of all this uncertainty <laughs> that so many people are faced with. My next guest, Kate Carey, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, Cornelia. It's really great to be here. It's wonderful to have you. So uh, just to let the audience know a little bit about uh, your bio and, and what it is that you do presently. You mm -hmm. are a health coach, you're a nutritionist, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. you, um, you have the holistic approach. You use the holistic yeah. approach and you're here today to share a story with us of um, what got you into health coaching, nutrition coaching, and using the holistic way of healing. Mm, yeah, and um, and you know, like I, I briefly shared, and now to share with your audience as well, is that um, I, I essentially got into what I'm doing now because I was chronically ill and I had chronic fatigue, and that was really that was a culmination of a lot of things. So it was a lot of years of being very unwell where my body eventually just shut down. And so, um, you know, I was very, I became very afraid of living because it was, um, you know, even walking 20 minutes was really hard. And I had a dog, I had a big dog that needed a lot of exercise. And I had a full-time corporate job. I was at university as well. And I was in a very stressful relationship. And at the time, I was seeing doctors over and over again and, and they just kept saying, nothing's wrong with you, nothing's wrong with you. Um, but I was sick all the time. Um, I had a throat infection probably every month, um, really bad stomach pains, you know, sort of IBS. And um, that was really um, quite embarrassing too because you sort of, you have to rush off to the toilet um, or avoid social situations altogether. So life life became pretty um, depressing and I was sort of really running on adrenaline, adrenaline, I think, just, you know, keeping, I had this kind of, I had to keep it all together persona and found it really hard to ask for help um, and that kind of thing. And my body just eventually gave up um, and it was just no more. And, um, you know, we could sort of talk for, forever about all of that, but essentially what I ended up doing, even after seeing lots of um, different natural therapist was um, I just checked myself into a health retreat for a week in Australia and um, I was set to actually move overseas to London um, shortly after that and I think the stress of of all of that was going on as well and um, I landed at this retreat and I thought oh I thought this was going to be um, a group retreat and it wasn't it was a it was just it was private and it was just me so I, I got there and um, I said you know where, where is everybody else and the lady said oh no it's just you so um, for me it was just you know I landed in this place and essentially it was a lot of detox a lot of things I'd never heard about before um, it was juicing with green juices and taking herbs to to flush toxins out um, and I learned about things like meditation um, there was a lady that came to teach me yoga every day and um, I had some form of treatment each day um, like a massage or reiki or you know something like that and I was really left in this lovely space um, with a lot of time on my own that I'd never had before um, sort of surrounded by books on health uh, videos on health um, and I watched a movie called uh, What the Bleep I don't know if you've um, watched that one um, and I, I fell in love with Joe Dispenza's work in that and I I paused the video every time he spoke and, and you know wrote down what he said so you know it was the first time in my life that I I 
made a connection between the thoughts that I think and how I feel um, that I'm an energetic being that I have a vibration and I have an aura and and how I'm feeling is affecting my world around me and so it was just like a literal kind of aha moment of one after the other after the other and it completely changed my life um, and how I felt and by the end of that week I left I left there with more energy than I think I even knew was possible to have and the time that I spent there was a lot of reflection too so I um the relationship that I had been in he was quite a severe drug addict um, by the end and I was trying to keep that secret from everybody and hold that all together and fix him and hold my job down and finish my um, degree and you know a lot of there was a lot of secret keeping that I had because I was trying to present this image of I've, I've got it all together and I'm okay um, but really I wasn't and then I realized that the people around me not not all of them um, some of my dear friends then are still my great friends now but I was around a lot of people with addictions a lot of people um, that were not really helping to support um, a flourishing lifestyle and were not into well-being or anything like that. So it was a huge letting go for me um, that time away. And I just, I was, I was so excited and inspired when I left that I just kind of launched into this new lifestyle. And one bit by bit, one step at a time, I made changes to my life and the thoughts I thought and what I was putting into my body and caring about what I was putting onto my skin and um and so it's I mean really to give hope that if you've got chronic illness that you don't all you don't have to have that for the rest of your life and and I do work with women um now with chronic fatigue mainly and many of them come to me thinking that that, that that's it it's a sentence for life that they own this thing and it's them and so I really work on helping them see that it doesn't have to be who they are forever. And, um, you know, my experience was that chronic fatigue went in a week. Um, but then that what that allowed was for me to heal all of the other things um, like migraines and my stomach issues and all those other things I could progressively heal over the years. And so, you know, that took about six years to heal all of that. Um, but that experience just gave me that motivation and um, drive to then I moved countries on my own and really just immerse myself in that world. And recently, actually just beginning of this year, I left my corporate life behind completely um, just to work in um, nutrition and well-being. So I'm not sure if you want me to explore one of those areas a little more, Cornelia, but just sort of share that kind of overview just quite hard to pack down into it <laughs> into it time. is it is but you told the story so well you know how you immersed yourself into your healing and that it is a step-by-step -step process it didn't just you know happen overnight mm -hmm. but you were dealing with a lot of issues and were you know because you were talking about your stomach issues your throat your mm. um the uh, chronic fatigue and how it began with the retreat and then little by little by little over the years uh, mm. you really started you know healing on all the levels and uh, you know because again when we when we ha come into an illness like this it's not something that happens overnight it didn't come in overnight it's been something that's been <laughs> A long time into that we've been living with for a long time right yeah <laughs> you know? yeah you make a great point actually because it is something I think often we want a quick fix we're sort of an instant gratification society at times and you know you can order something off Amazon and have it the next day or whatever and and often in healing I mean I don't know that I thought that myself but I do come across um uh people as I'm working that you know want to heal really quickly and I do often say how long did it take you to get here and you know not to say that you can't heal overnight because that anything is possible right but um, sometimes we've done a lot of 
a lot of undoing to get to where we are. We have to sort of make our way back um, to holistic health and give our bodies um, a chance to really recover. And I like what you're all about with the mind, body, soul approach, because I've, I can see that in real life too, because I, I had, after the chronic fatigue, when I was able to deal with everything else and something that I struggled a lot with in London was candida. I really suffered with it. Um, I was, you know, had chronic um, thrush infections and, and that was every month. And I did all the physical stuff no sugar, um, just eating three meals a day, um, everything. Every, you know, I got the Donna Gates Body Ecology book and I read it back to front and I did every single thing. And none of the physical stuff helped. And it was actually going to a meditation workshop. I'm a, I'm a student of Joe Dispenza. I've done um, all of his work. And it was one of those workshops, five days. I went and I came back. And I never had candida again. And so that was just, um, you know, one of the examples of the emotional spiritual side that sometimes is what needs the attention over the physical um, that you're trying to do. Yeah, I, you know, I totally uh, am a believer that, you know, 90% of our illnesses are emotional based and the other 10% is environmental and all, all the others. So it's, yeah. it's emotional based and you know because it seems like even when you went to the first retreat um when you did that first healing was about massage and about you know mm -hmm. having a smoothie and relaxation and and being you know you were the only one and just doing some reading and relaxing and all of that and then you know all the joe dispenza work the higher consciousness the the mm -hmm. hear the truth and we release and let go of the toxicity of the toxic emotions that we've stored in our bodies over you know the years that um it's like peeling the onion so yeah. i so i think that you know you have a lot to share because you've got your corporate job that you you know let go of and then you've got your uh holistic healing the chronic um fatigue and illness and there's so many things that uh, we can dive deeper in, but I want to let the audience know now how they can, um, you know, find you on social media and, uh, you know, for the people that want to get in contact with you and work with you directly, because I know mm -hmm. that there's many women that are suffering with this and um, you are a health coach and a nutritionist uh, offering this holistic approach. So how can people get in contact with you? Oh, thanks, Cornelia. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty straightforward. I've got the same um, name across everything. So my website's katecarrynutrition.com and it's the same across my social media. And so uh, Instagram and Facebook, it's Kate Nutrition. And I'm also on LinkedIn because um, a lot of corporate women are um, suffering with, with health and burnout and having had a corporate life, I'm on there too. And, and, that, and that's just as my name. And um, sometimes the nutrition bit can be misleading, I think. Um, but nutrition to me is nutrition for the mind, body and soul. So it's everything. And, and I normally find if you get two of them online, um, the other one comes on board too. So, you know, a foundation of good food and, and good thoughts. And you can usually, you know, start to balance the spiritual out or just, you know, pick a couple of them and and let the other one naturally come in and, and come online. So definitely one step at a time, I find is uh, that's my approach anyway. Yeah, I, I love it. And might I also say that you look absolutely healthy and glowing. <laughs> and Thank so you. your healing is definitely evident in, um, in your auric field, in your being and <laughs> how, you, how you look on camera. And so you can definitely tell you you're glowing. So thank you so much, Kate, for coming on and for sharing with the audience today your uh, healing story. And audience, thank you so much for tuning in, for listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, and we'll see you again next time. Take good care of yourself.